taking the full allocation of the time because uh, I don't think there's any need to. A lot of this has been covered, but um, I do want to welcome the fact I've been able to contribute something to this debate. And at the outset, I would like to recognise uh, the terrible loss that has been suffered by families over many years and decades, but particularly over the last, i say, three to five years since COVID, we've seen some horrific accidents on the roads and uh, terrible loss of young life in particular. And that is something I know that we all want to try and combat against. Minister, in your outline, you, you spoke at length on the different um, implementations you're hoping to bring in with this bill and some of the reasons you see for uh, our increasing road accident figures and the difficulty in trying to combat road injuries and road deaths. And I suppose uh, we can all do a quick flick of what we might think is contributing to that carelessness. Certainly is a big part of it. Speed is most definitely implicated, but so is road quality, I would say too. Driver skill and experience, I would think, is a very major part of it now with more people on the roads and people driving more powerful cars. And the issue of intoxication, whether it's through drink or alcohol or people that are sleeping or falling asleep or whatever, it's all down to, I suppose, management of uh, the individual driver, and management of the car that they're in, and understanding that you know, when they're driving, they're also responsible for the other road users that they come into contact with, not just themselves and, and their passengers. And you've spoke about your, I suppose, the main nub of this bill, which is enforcement, uh, slowing the overall speed rates around the country, which you see as the panacea for all this. I don't actually agree with you wholeheartedly in that. I would say it certainly has a role to play. But I think people have already outlined here in the House, uh, you know, people are breaking speed limits regardless how low you drop them. And without adequate enforcement, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter what you say the posted limit is for people that are going to break them. I would say to you also that there is an issue with car quality in the country. And I know in the NCT we have tried to basically make it mandatory that people have their cars checked. And within that, you're really targeting in older cars the issues of tyres and suspensions, steering geometry, most importantly, braking systems. And that is supposed to be picked up at NCTs, but they're only relevant if you're having them for starters. And secondly, you'll be well aware of the delays that are around the country now in some NCT centres that are six and eight months out. And it is a case that you will find people, and I'm sure you've seen it, Minister, I see it. I guarantee if we walked out into the car park here today, we'd find a couple of cars uh, with tyres that are not, uh, that are beyond uh, the minimum limit, legal limit. And people are probably not aware, and they're waiting to get them picked up at NCT. The other point I'd make to you, Minister, is that young drivers, when I started driving, which is more than a few years ago, uh, I was lucky enough to get a banger that couldn't do past 30 miles an hour, as did my two brothers. And we all learned to drive in that car, and we were not a danger to anybody because, and quite honestly, we were nearly able to be passed out by a guy on a bicycle. But it is the case now that if you have a young driver and you want to drive them an old, buy them an older car, something to slow them down, you can't do it because they can't get insured out. And the insurance companies are forcing young drivers into cars from about 2015 on. Those are modern cars in the main, and they are capable of much higher speeds than people would have had 20, 30 years ago when they started driving. And this is something that's not being looked at. And once those kids get their driving test, they're entitled, as you know, to drive on their own. They're entitled to put their family and friends into that car. And basically, in a lot of cases, they are not being monitored after that. And driving a test Passing a driving test is absolutely uh, doesn't confer any great ability on you in terms of your responsibility to your passengers and to other road users. And we see that constantly, Minister, weekend after weekend across the country. So I think you do need to have a look at that. And I think driving test centres also, we've got very long waiting lists now, an ordinate waiting list for driving tests. I can't understand how it takes so long, up to a year in some cases, for people waiting to receive a test. And in terms of the testing itself, what we're actually testing, I'm not sure that it's uh, requisite now to the modern driving standards. I know if you drive for companies, Minister, as you probably know yourself, here in the UK you'll be sent for driving testing in the UK with a lot of the large pharma companies, where they send you into speed pans to teach you how to drive a car in the wet, to understand the road conditions, the temperature of the road, the water on the road, the visibility that you have at night time, the stopping distance that you have to exercise when the road surface is different. None of this has been spoken about in terms of driving tests in this country. 
And the other thing I'd say to you, Minister, we're talking about more enforcement at the roadside. Well, when was the last time you saw a guard checking the tyre depth, the tread depth of a tyre, when stopping at the roadside? One of the very first things that would tell you whether a car is fit for the road or not is the quality of the tyres on it. And I think that should be mandatory on every checkpoint. Yeah, it used to be done years ago. I'm not sure if you remember, it, Minister. There were guards years ago that used to carry a depth gauge in their pocket when they stopped cars. If they wanted to, they checked the gauge. I'm not sure that's done anymore. And I think it should be reintroduced, to be quite frank with you. The lights are the same. And even a suspension test is possible to do at the roadside just by pressing up and down on the four corners of a car. Not that difficult to do, and I guarantee you, if you do it with a number of cars out on the main road randomly, you will be amazed at the amount of cars that are driving with poor suspensions. So I think there's a lot to be said about safety systems, Minister. The modern cars have them. But I would uh, relay a story to you recently. I was travelling with somebody in a car, and we went to uh, take the exit off a motorway, but he forgot to put on the indicator. And he has a system for lane changing, and basically as he went left, the car corrected right. Now, there were people, there was a guy coming up our inside. We didn't have a collision, but that system and also the emergency braking, if you're driving up behind somebody now in a modern car and you have a kind of crash preventer, that will jam on ABS in the car. If you're somebody coming behind you, that will cause that. These are all things we need to speak to people about doing tests. And finally, Minister, I would say we need some targeting of um, younger drivers in the main. And I know I heard other people saying here that people are driving a long time without uh, driving tests, and they may well be. But I would say to you, statistically, they're involved in very few accidents because by virtue of their experience, and older people tend to drive slower as a rule and get into less trouble. But I do think we need to do something about the culture of, of young driving. As I said to you, funny enough, young drivers as, that I know would certainly not take a drink and drive. It's absolutely abhorrent to them that you would get into a car and drink and drive. But the same people who quite happily get into a car with four of their pals and belt down the road at 80 miles an hour trying to impress them with the music going. And we need to try and impress on young people exactly the damage that that is doing because it is heartbreaking, heartbreaking every weekend to hear about these accidents that we know are largely preventable in, in a very exceptional number of cases, not, but the most are. And it's down to driving behaviour, uh, watching the roads, having experience, driving a decent car and just remembering, you know, that you're not uh, infallible and you're not unbreakable. And we need to get that message out, Minister. And one other thing I'd say to you in terms of your road reducing limits, and I can understand how they work around uh, the urban areas, but let me tell you, in my own city of Waterford, we have, I'd say probably somewhere around about six, eight miles of orbital road, a dual lane, where... Uh, the speed limit on that is now 60 kilometres an hour. And you can then go out onto the primary road, the N25, and you can do 100 kilometres an hour in a single lane, which has not been updated in 30 years. That road has had no roadworks done to it. The N25, Waterford to Cork. And this Transport Minister has spent buttons on it, 4 million euro in the life of this government. And on that road, you can do 100 kilometres an hour. You're now going to reduce it to 8 kilometres an hour. But that means if I get into my car, to drive to Cork, it's going to take me now probably an hour and 40 to 45 minutes to do what's less than an 80 mile, an hour, an 80 mile journey, Minister. So you are putting that difficulty on, on regional users and on people who have uh, salespeople on the road and all that. There's an impact to all of them. And I'm not saying that I don't approve of it. I'd like to see how it works. But all I'd say to you is we do need to look at what we're doing with roads, road markings, road coverage speed limits. But as well as that, Minister, we have to sort out the accident black spots. And one final thing I'd say to Minister, Gatso vans. And I've seen Gatso vans in actual fact on the Dunmore Road in Warford. Every other weekend you will see a Gatso van in an area that's 30 kilometres an hour. And because of the traffic and all of that, there's very, very few people come around there exceeding the speed limit. But anybody who doesn't know that it's there will often be doing more than 30 kilometres an hour. It's nothing in the speed of a good road. And he's there clocking up revenue all day. Now, I can't remember, and I'm nearly 60 years of age, a single fatality on that road. I can't even remember a bad accident on it. And he's parked there, and yet I can go to 10 different accident black spots in the country, and I will not find a Gatso van there, simply because there's not the footfall of traffic there. And that's what he's targeting. And that's what happens when you make a system that's not about roads reinforcement or road safety, but it's about collecting tax and giving a franchise to people whose job is to make sure that they get plenty fish in a barrel. So I would ask you to look at that, Minister, as well, in light of what you're proposing. Thank you.